All right, what's up, PD2 fans? Varric here again. We're back for part two of uh, of our two part series, as far as like a beginner's guide to Di uh, Project Diablo 2. Um, as you as you know, last video I went over more outside Diablo 2 things like resources, community. Um, if you want to link to that video, I'm going to put it in the description once I finish making this, um, and vice versa for the other video to get to here. Um, and then all the things I talk about, I'll try to post links in the description if if uh, if it's warranted. But yeah, like I said, we'll uh, we'll get into some in game stuff advice uh things i went over in the first video as far as in-game play um i'll kind of showcase that here and i'll show you a couple more things that are unique to pd2 uh if you weren't uh things you probably won't be used to if you were playing diablo 2 so let's uh get into it Okay, so first thing I want to talk about is the loot filter. Now, this is something you're going to do before you get into the game. You don't necessarily have to do it before you get into the game, but if you want a loot filter, you got to exit the game, go into this, uh, you know, this screen, and you can set your loot filter. So this is going to be your central hub. So right, this is how you get into Project Diablo 2. So when you download the game, this will come up, and you're going to hit play, and you're going to get into Project Diablo 2, right? Um, as you see behind me. But what you can do before you do that is go into your item filters. So what is an item filter? An item filter is basically just something that someone created that highlights certain items, shows them on your screen, and for the just general fluff items, the general trash items you don't care about, you don't want, you have no interest in, um, it's going. It's not even going to show them on your screen. Um, now you can make you can make the loot filter. Um, more strict or not as strict, right? There's different settings. I can, I'll go into that in the future. Um, but as you see, there's all different kinds of people who have done different types of loop filters. Um, feel free to try them all out. Ask in the Discord which one seems best. Uh, for me, Chris's filter, I've used that ever since I started playing for years and years. Um, I like it. I'm just used to it. Right, and it, it has it has to do with as well with how uh, how the items are represented and how they're shown. Right, so his filter has these nice little stars. I'm very used to this. Um, some filters a lot are a lot louder. Some filters are a lot quieter. As far as like big old text, like oh my god, pick this up kind of deal. Um, you know, it's just something that makes you that catches your eye and lets you like see. Oh, like that's something dropped. I need to I need to pay attention to that. Um, also nice, you'll see on your mini map, the little dot of where the item is. And as you see here, this will come up in your, um, your side screen. I, I forget exactly. There's a name for it. I forget what that's called, but yeah, you can see it dropped on the ground and then it, it your showcase, your showcase drops or something like that. I think is what it's called. Um, so you'll see, oh shoot, like, like maybe a jaw rune dropped, uh, on a mob you had, almost killed and as you walk away it dies right well you're not going to see that right? in diablo 2 you're not going to see the that high rune that just dropped but you can see it's showcasing hey something just dropped now it's uh, there you go see it's on my map so right as i'm walking away it tells me oh something dropped and i look at my map oh geez there it is right or maybe i'm too far away and it's not on my map anymore but it, it told me on the showcase something dropped it's like, oh man, I better go back and, and look and find something. Um, so that's that's a really nice part of the loot filter that I think is is very uh, important because um, I don't know how many ruins I've lost in Diablo 2 that I didn't you know didn't see because I didn't have a loot filter. So that's something very nice to to have. Um, now again, it's more as, as far as the loot filters go. Which one to pick? It's going to be a style thing. Pick the style you like. Um, you know, maybe some people will accentuate or emphasize certain things, and maybe some won't. But uh, it's mostly just style. But they're all going to do that thing where they have the showcase over here, and they're all going to probably do the thing where they have a drop over there on the on the mini map. Um, so that's loot filter. Again, you just click it. And it'll say, uh, it should say save filter, right? There you go, save filter. So I have Chris's, Chris's set. You probably need to be out of the game for it to apply though. Um, all right, that's loop filter. Um, I'm, I don't need to show big examples of it. If you want examples, just go watch some of my videos. Um, Next up, I want to talk about the help screen, right? So, okay, you you set your filter, you got into the game. What do I do now? How do I find uh, what's different? How do I, uh, you know, 
um, familiarize myself with with new things in Project Diablo 2. Go to help screen, right? So help screen is is a good place to start if you want to kind of understand like all the things that are new in Project Diablo 2. Um, this seems like a lot uh, if you just take the time and read through it one after another. Just just don't try to get overwhelmed. Basically, it's just telling you some common recipes here, right? So whatever gem type, uh, combine three of the same, get gem of the next quality. Here's your flawless gems. Combine three of those with a key. You get the, the perfect gem. Same thing with runes. Um, and the nice thing is a lot of times you will see in your loot filter it'll kind of give you a little note, a little material, right? So you can see there, if I hover over this, three shales plus a key equals a doll rune, right? So I've organized my my uh, runes, so it's one, two, three, four, five, you know, all the way up to 20, okay? So this is pretty common, most people do this. Um, some people will put it on the, on the first shared stash just so they can kind of share through their characters. I like to have each character have unique, uh, have their own unique runes. Um, I'll put my big runes in, in the shared. So anyway, that is, uh, you can see that, I mean, if you look through most of the, the items, right? So we're talking about crafting here. What is, you know, crafting, you can see all the, all the recipes for crafting. So if I want to craft a ring, I have to combine a soul rune, this perfect ruby, um, and a jewel in, with a, with a base, right? As you know, or as you may know from Diablo, crafting is I combine the jewel, I combine, or excuse me, I combine the gem, I combine the rune, and I combine the jewel, and I put a base with it, and it crafts something, right? Um, now, you also just saw, what were those? What were those jewel fragments, if you saw it? Right, The you can break down your jewels into jewel fragments. Make sure none of these are bad, right? Or uh, none of those are anything good. Break it down into jewel fragments, and there they are, right? So this is just a nice quality of life thing. If if they're junk jewels and you don't care about them and you just want to use them for crafting, well, now I have a nice stack of 50 that I can use for crafting in the future, okay? Um, you also saw this. Uh, so this is new to the game. The quality of life stuff, again, uh, this obviously is a random drop you have, or you can buy it, but you can have things where I don't have the identify tomb yet. So you can have things that are kind of give you unlimited uses. They drop randomly in the world. Uh, so you just got to look for them. These are the, you know, it's either the town portal identify or skeleton key. So those are the kind of quality of life things you can get um, in the game, which is nice. Going back to the help screen. Um, yeah, the, uh, okay, we did that, we did that, talked about crafting. Um, these are nice, these are Larzooks uh, items, also new to Project Diablo 2, or unique to Project Diablo 2. One's a puzzle box, one's a puzzle peak, piece, as you can see by the number. This one is more rare, this one is uh, a little less rare, but it, it puts sockets. It gives you a chance at putting sockets in an item. So, again, loot filter, check it out, it tells you what you need to know. Helmets and chests and shields can get one to two. Uh, one hand weapons, one to two, two hand weapons, two to four. Uh, a lot of times it'll also tell you in your weapon. Um, let me see if I can find a, just a random weapon. Yeah, there we go. So again, loot filter. Loot filter will teach you so many things about this game that you uh, that you need to know. Max sockets, right? Larzooks, two. Puzzle box, two. And then uh, corruption, two. So Larzooks, L means the actual quest, right? Add socket, we'll add two. <clears throat> but... Uh, if I if I puzzle box it, it can add two, or if I corrupt it, it can add four. So remember, um, corrupt can add uh, sockets. It can add the maximum amount of sockets. So you're either, in general, if you get a cool new weapon, um, you either want to corrupt max sockets or uh, corrupt a cool corruption, like maybe enhanced damage and increased attack speed, or maybe plus one skills, and then you can puzzle box it after you've corrupted it um, to get good sockets on it. So. Another another nice way to uh, make your items unique and much better than uh, than just dropping plain. Uh, okay, back to the help screen, and yep, right there it leads us into corrupting items. So yeah, corrupting items. I talked about a, very quickly last game or last uh, video, but essentially what you're doing, uh, I'll, I'll sacrifice one of my world stone shards for you guys. <clears throat> Jesus. 
Essentially what you're doing is you are putting the item you want to corrupt with a world stone shard. Jeez, oh, sorry. And you're slamming it. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, this has a chance of bricking. I think it's a 25% chance. When you brick an item, it turns into a random rare. Okay. So I did not brick that item, um, but it could have, right? And for a magic item, yes, turning into a rare would be an upgrade. But for the most part, you're not going to be slamming magic items. You're going to be slamming like these unique items, crazy cool items, and bricking it into a random rare is probably a a bummer right so this one rolled as you can see the again loot filter you see the red star this got crushing blow and increased attack speed and as i mentioned in my last video you can look at all the corruptions if you just go to the pd2 wiki there is a link to that video i will also put or excuse me there is a link to that website in my last video and i'll also put a link in this video um but yeah you can you can see a lot of all my gear should be corrupted um well it, unless rune words you cannot corrupt rune words um, right here, I have faster cast rate. Here, I have faster cast rate. I got lightning resist on this, faster cast rate, um, poison resist. So, as you see, like the star represents the red star, represents what you corrupted. Okay. Um, all right, <clears throat> back to here. Uh, yep, wiki for all these things. Game settings. So, so, next thing I want to talk about is game settings. Uh, well, actually, no, real quick, we'll go up here. Shortcuts. While hovering over an item, you can use shortcuts. So if I wanted to identify an item, um, just quality of life things again. Um, here, let's go find a quick item I can identify. Um, just shortcuts. Uh, there's lots of shortcuts in the game um, that just make things a little bit easier. Let's see if my loot filter actually lets me identify anything. There you go. <clears throat> So we have an amulet that we need to identify. And as you see, it's got a couple stars on it. So, okay, that means it's probably more, a little more important than normal. Um, but if I wanted to identify it, I could just do that, right click and, and identify it. But say I don't want to go through all those clicks and I have lots of things I want to identify. Well, I just hold in shift, as you see in the help screen, hold in shift and left click and I'll identify it. All right, two summonings, all that stuff. So I'm not going to slam it. Um, but yeah, that, that shows you what you can use shift, right click, move between inventories. Uh, what that means is like, if I wanted to, these are, these are two inventories, right? Move between say, I want to put more world stone shards in there, shift, right click, puts it in. If I was in my bank, it would do the same thing. Control, right click, move to ground. So you saw, I probably did that with this control, right click drops at the ground, or I could just, you know, do that, but who wants to press all those buttons control rip, shift right click move to a closed cube right so if your cube is not active on your screen and i wanted to move that to there boom control right click or control shift right click and there it is um and then lastly yeah toggle stacked unstacked the nice thing about toggle stacked unstacked is right so if it's if it's a stacked form you see a plus sign you see the little number it will never go inside you can never socket it right so that's kind of a nice safety feature you cannot put this into an item all right now if i put it in the unstacked form now i can put this into an item the nice thing about that is you don't accidentally socket something that you would not want to um, and most things you're going to pick up off the ground at end game are going to drop drop in the stacked form so way less chance of uh, accidentally socketing something so that's kind of nice um well holding an item place one unstacked place one stacked right <clears throat> so i can either control shift left click to place it unstacked or control left click to place it stacked right <clears throat> um all right so that's that charm inventory yeah this is a super nice feature the charm inventory it gives you just more space to to utilize because in diablo 2 you had you only had this right you only had this inventory and you had to use your charms in that inventory uh, which meant you just had no room to pick up anything you kind of had to put anything in your cube if you wanted to actually have um, a full set of charms but here you have an actual charm inventory now your charms will not work if they are not in the charm inventory you can see that is now red so that is not no longer working but if I put that there, boom, it works and it's in the charm inventory. Okay, so that's a super nice feature. I really wish Diablo 2 had that, um, but alas, they do not. 
So that's that charm inventory. And then here we will get into the additional settings. So as you see, and you may notice that there's difference of how this game looks compared to uh, regular project, uh, regular Diablo 2, excuse me. It is a lot sharper, it is a lot cleaner. This is not how, how sharp the game looks in Diablo 2 uh, Lord of Destruction. Um, so some geniuses have uh, you know put in some cool features and uh, really adjusted the, the quality of this game uh, as far as graphical quality. So a lot of people are like, oh, I can never play Diablo 2 because the graphics are just terrible. And yes, the graphics are still, you know, this is still a 20 plus year old game, but all things considered, it is very sharp looking and I have no issues with it. I had no problem with playing with it. Um, if you do see my game and you ever watch my videos and you're like, no, I couldn't get used to that. Honestly, just start playing and you are going to immediately forget about that. You know, you don't realize it. You're more interested in gameplay and item itemization. So, yeah. But to show you that, right, you saw in the help screen, control zero will take you to the D2, D2GL menu. So D2GL is where a lot of the sharpness happens, where a lot of the custom uh, graphics happen. So that's kind of their, uh, that's just what they call it. I don't know what the GL stands for, but you can get to some extra options here. You can talk, do full screen, not full screen. Um, don't. Um, I, this is not going to be a guide on what D2GL is. If you want to learn more about it, you could probably just Google it and look it up. But I don't know what everything is. Um, but I just know that some of this stuff can be helpful. I don't ever access this after I've set my features. Um, you can pretty much just like don't even worry about it. Unlock cursor, which is kind of nice. You can go between different screens. Um, in fact, I didn't even know that was a thing. I might even do that now. Um, full screen, not full screen. Um, max background FPS, uh, as you can see, yeah. So if the window's inactive, it'll it'll drop your FPS, which is nice. Um, dark mode, light mode. Quality preset, yeah, that's just custom presets. Uh, only other thing you really need to worry about is here you can mess around with color gradients. So it's kind of cool. You can pick the right color that works for you. I like it on 12, but you can like change the hues. Just just adds a different experience, right? You can do a little like cool darkness to it, whatever you want. So I like 12. That's where I've set it. That's where I keep it. Um, again, here's some more features. You know, H yeah, HD cursor. I mean, you see that cursor is you know, very, very new looking, which is very nice. Um, so you can set that in the game. Mini map. Again, that's that's a really cool thing. Mini map up here. Um, so you can set that or not set that. Um, yeah, those are cool stuff. You can also you can also do the regular mini map that Diablo two used to have by by hitting tab. I think that's how you loaded up the mini map in Diablo two. Uh, and it will take away the mini map up there. So you just do a normal map. Um, all right, that's that. And then it has D2GL. You can also go, so we're all used to this stat screen. You can get to an advanced stat screen if you hit uh, O on your, oops, excuse me. If you hit um, eight on your keyboard, sorry. Had to muscle memory it. So eight on your keyboard will take you to your advanced stat screen. <clears throat> now, right, so this is a, a better breakdown of what my stats are. So eight brings that up. Now, if you also want to see your mercenary stat screen, you can hit your mercenary and see it'll immediately show your mercenary stat screen. So as you see, I changed that and it shows my merc. Um, but really, this seems like a lot again. But you know, just read through it and you'll understand uh, if you if you know Diablo two or do you just know stats in general. Mo most of what this stuff is here's your resists, right? Here's here's your max possible achieved resists. You can see this is eighty one and I have 92, so I will have 81 resist, right? This is the max resist you can get to. Uh, curse resist is nice, so that's how, uh, how, how able to resist curses you are. Um, so the higher that number, the, the less likely you are to get cursed. Um, and you know, curse length is still just as, just as long. We used to have a reduced cursed reduction or a curse reduction buff, but we don't have that anymore. Um, just curse resist now. Sorry, my dog's gonna start playing, so you might start hearing them. Uh, yeah, absorption. So I have some fire absorption, um, damage reduction. Here's like your PDR percent, and here's your PDR, right? So you can have percent damage reduction or just flat damage reduction. Obviously, you want percent more because 
you're resisting you're reducing a percent of damage versus just a value of damage um attacker takes damage elemental mastery so elemental mastery is the damage you do with the element right so um it's your skill damage right so it increases your skill damage so you can see on my shield i have two fat two fire facets uh so plus 10 fire skill damage so that is my fire mastery if i take that off yeah see the 10 you can see the 10 goes or the 18 goes down to eight um, and then pierce you probably know what pierce is right same thing minus seven enemy fire resistance makes me more likely to uh hurt damage hurt enemies with fire if they have resistance to it um yep base ar base defense yeah, ar attack rating um damage cast rate <clears throat> right so i have 100 cast rate you see this ring is 20 percent cast if i take that off i got an 80. you'll also notice my breakpoints right so you look at breakpoints for molten boulder and here are my faster cast rate breakpoints right so meaning i will cast it faster so just because you have one point of faster cast rate does not mean you've cast one percent faster it means you are one you are a little bit closer to getting to your next breakpoint so if i take this 20 percent ring off i go down to faster cast rate 80 and i have now dropped a break dropped a breakpoint meaning i will cast slower right so if i put that on i go up a breakpoint meaning i will cast faster so as you increase your breakpoints, you have you you reduce the amount of frames you require to cast a spell, right? So say I need 10 frames to sit there and cast a spell, and then I increase my faster cast rate, and now I only need eight frames or six frames, right? So the frames, the frames that are happening on your screen at a period of time, right? So it's just a length of time that is required to get through the start to finish of a spell cast, right? So that's that's what that means, and that's why you have to get your breakpoints to get a faster cast rate, and that works the same with faster hit recovery, right? So if I had no hit recovery and I get hit by something, I have to go through this whole like oh ouch hit before I actually am able to use start casting spells again. But if I have a high faster hit recovery, um, I no longer have to take all those frames to like go through the animation of getting hit by something. It's meaning I'm more likely to be able to uh, finish that hit recovery and cast a spell after that. So that increases your survivability. Like say I teleport into something and I get hit by something. I wanna go through that hit recovery quickly so that I can cast a spell again. Um, same rule applies for increased attack rate or increased attack speed as faster cast rate. So if I wanna attack faster just because I have that one point of 1% increased attack speed does not necessarily mean I will attack 1% faster. But if that 1% gets me to the next break point, then yes, I will attack faster, if that, if that makes sense. Um, crushing blow, deadly strike. Um, just, I mean, again, you can look these up, what they do. I'm not gonna go over everything as I just went over everything, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, nice stat screen. Again, it works for mercenary as well. Um, so I wanted to spend some time on that. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I think I've been through most of my things. Sorry, I go to Onion because we were discussing um, what we wanted to talk about. Yeah, actually, I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about. Um, shared stash. So all of these pages are shared with all of your alts, except for your personal page. P is your personal page. Um, so all the rest of this will be shared and your personal will not. Um, Okay, I think that is what I wanted to do as far as the in-game stuff went. Again, I'm I'm showing this with the assumption that you know Diablo 2 and you're aware of the normal Diablo 2 things, right? Your waypoints, your quests, your abilities to switch between acts. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, I did say, you know, I did say there's some updated skills uh, again, I'm not going to sit here and go through them all with you. If you want to see what class has what skills, just go to the PD2 wiki. And again, I'm going to post all this in my description in this video. And I'll also post the link to my part A or part one, excuse me, which shows a lot of the resources you can use for the game on how to learn the game. So, all right. I think we've done a crash course of everything, guys. I, I, I think uh, I went over everything I wanted to go over as far as just features and changes in pd2 that, that you should be excited for so 
we're all finished up as always if you like this video please like please subscribe uh there should be a button in your bottom right um or i think that's probably over here as i'm talking um yeah i, I love doing this content so if you have uh, any advice questions uh the things you want me to go over happy to do it happy to make a new video so that's it hope you guys have a good rest of your day see you later